So I played Fallout 76 as beta for the first time and to be honest, I really saw a lot of potential in having an online Fallout game where I can play with my friends. In fact, I think this game is going to be positive for the Fallout franchise and bring in a lot of new players who wouldn't have even played Fallout in the first place. But in this early review, I'm going to be reviewing Fallout 76 from a solo player's perspective. I like Fallout because it's a single player RPG. And I feel like many of the mechanics in Fallout 76 have actually removed what made it a Fallout game to begin with. Some of them are minor, but some of them are really more important to me. So in this early review video, I just wanted to go over the top five things that stood out to me. And if you guys do agree with my perspective on this, please tweet this video to Bethesda or even just retweet it and share it because the devs are listening to our feedback. And I know for a fact some of these things can be improved in the future. So firstly, I'm fresh out of the vault and I've been questing and exploring for about an hour and I've got pipe pistols for days. But then, what's this? I find a weapon stashed underneath the pub's counter, tucked away just out of sight. It's a shotgun, a shotgun. One of my favorite weapons and what's this? It's got some ammo next to it as well. So I immediately go to equip it. I can't use it because I'm not level 15. I need to be level 15 to use it. Man, are you kidding? Why is this even a thing? It's so anticlimactic. I finally find a new interesting weapon to use and the game tells me, no, you cannot use this weapon yet. You're not a high enough level. Later, I even found a hardened sniper rifle, which I also could not use. I mean, how is that fun at all? It completely removed the rewarding feeling I usually get when I explore out of the way in these little areas and locations which I have no other reason to visit other than to explore. And then when I find an interesting weapon, which my character can't even craft yet, and then the game tells me I can't use it. I can understand why there might be a level cap on being able to use some weapons, but I also feel like it doesn't really affect PvP that much because players are actually level to one another. So if I'm level 40 and I attack you and you're level 6, our damage will actually be equalised. And Bethesda, if you're really worried about that being an issue, why not just limit the amount of 50 caliber ammo that you can find at a low level? But it's just the worst thing when you let me find a really cool gun that I like and then you don't let me use it. That's not fun at all. Point number two, I'm going to be honest. I thought that the events were a great idea. You basically get small and big events and every time you look on your map, there's something going on and you can instantly fast travel to these events just for a few caps. And then you can join in trying to defend a location or escort some robot or some other bizarre situation Bethesda's come up with. Some of these events were definitely better than others and more interesting. Like one of my favorite ones I had to do was defend food machinery in a factory from waves and waves of foes. And every now and again, it would actually break down and I would need to fix the machinery and I'd have to diagnose the system and find out what was wrong and what I'd need to fix. All of this while defending it from waves and waves of ghouls. And this was really fun and we had to work as a team in order to succeed, which is a really good thing. And I mean, you're probably thinking, yeah, that sounds pretty cool ESO. Well, it would have been cool, but the way the game spawned in the ghouls was pretty lazy, to be honest. I'd be defending the machines and then suddenly, I kid you not, a horde of 10 ghouls would just magically appear right in front of me. Ghouls would actually spawn next to the machines they needed to attack. And it just looked terrible. I just ended up hacking and slashing through all of the ghouls until they were dead. And it was just a bit brain dead, to be honest. It's a little bit lazy, really. At least spawn these ghouls outside of the building so they can all rush in and us as a team can set up choke points to defend them. Because having them spawn inside just made no sense and it looks ridiculous. But I also think it would be pretty cool if you eventually added the option to even build barricades on doors or defense turrets to help defend. Then you could have some people who focus on crafting having something to do that wasn't just punching and shooting things. Point number three. Personally, I found the game a little bit strange with no NPCs at all. And when I say NPCs, I mean non-playable characters. In most Bethesda games, these people would give you quests, you can buy items from them, you and you can also kill them. But without them, the world seemed pretty lifeless and dead. 
I mean, yeah, there were other players running around, but each one of them was either having their own solo experience like me, or they were in a group, chatting on Discord and running and gunning. I found that each quest I did to find somebody just led me to a dead body. I mean, Bethesda put all of this effort into creating these amazing factions that I really want to learn more about, but they're all dead. All of the factions in West Virginia are just extinct, no one exists anymore. It's really rather depressing. And I didn't actually realise that removing the speech roleplay dialogue options from the game would give me such a feeling of loss, but it did. It removed my ability to actually roleplay myself in a fantasy world, which is something I think all people who play Bethesda games really enjoy. You enjoy having the evil option or the good option in those dialogue choices. I think if you want to bring back at least some kind of roleplay element, you should really build a faction mechanic where players can actually join a faction like the Brotherhood of Steel for example or the Minutemen. This could literally be as simple as picking a faction at the start of joining a server, each faction could have its own goals, like the Minutemen who would get bonus caps for defending other player settlements from people who attack them. I know the Minutemen are not in the game but it's just an example everyone can relate to. You can even reward players with unique perk cards unique to that faction for fulfilling the faction's role. You could literally have a faction perk card slot in addition to your special perk card slots. This would then give players a sense of belonging. Like in Fallout 4 when I joined the railroad and I actually really started to feel sorry for the synths and started trying to save them from the institute. I feel like the faction system in previous games like the Elder Scrolls and Fallout games would give you a sense of purpose some kind of role to play in the bigger picture of the Fallout universe. And I think that's really important in a game like Fallout 76 as well. Now I want to talk about questing in Fallout 76. And this is, to be honest, probably my most important point in this whole review, because it was a little strange, if not very enjoyable at times. The locations in Fallout 76 are really interesting if you're prepared to take the time to explore them for all of those notes and holotapes which then allow you to piece together a story that really brings that location to life. And I absolutely adore these treasure hunt detective type locations like that, and I've done countless videos about them in previous Bethesda games. The only thing is, is that if you're trying to do this while being attacked by randomly spawning foes, which then obviously interrupts the holotape audio so you can't actually hear it anymore because you're being shot at, or even other players who are just in the area, which for some reason have super loud footsteps like take take a look at this video right here this clip survived oh she survived eventually the responders formed and i, I signed up right away it was so <laughs> i'm immersed so obviously this stops you from enjoying your solo experience and of course you can turn these down in the game options which i later discovered but I did find it quite challenging to play the game at a slow pace at times. You can't pause and listen to a holotape for example, which is understandable because this is a multiplayer game. But in that regard, I'm looking forward to private servers because it will actually allow me to play the game at a slow pace and really delve into the lore of this game's wealth of locations. But currently I was left a little bit frustrated after trying to play the game in this way. This brings me on to my final point, point number five. Now since the quests were obviously hard to listen to for a holotape, I found myself actually sadly losing interest in the quest lines of Fallout 76 and instead just running from event to event with no real direction or feeling of urgency to save somebody or find my lost son or father. I really had no emotional connection or attachment to any quest that I'd started. I was pretty much just running around aimlessly shooting and looting things and don't get me wrong, that was really fun, but it felt quite meaningless when I look back at it and what I actually did. Apart from leveling up my character, what did I really achieve from my adventure? I did get one opportunity to run off from other players and just to start to explore the deserted water treatment plant where nobody was. And it's quite easy to do this because there's not that many players on the map but you do have to consciously make a decision to walk away from everyone else and deliberately explore some location where nobody is. But once I was at the water treatment plant, I finally clear out the location and I'm enjoying reading one of these terminals 
and at this point another enemy spawns on top of a location I can't reach and he's shooting me while I'm reading this terminal and I've got to stop and go and kill it again. Better safe than sorry, right? Can't wait to see you again. Be careful. Oh god. This thing is like standing up there. I literally can't even hit it. It's kind of annoying. Requires terminal, god damn it. In order to get up there, I've actually got to go back down this tunnel again. I'll run all the way around. Just to kill this. Yeah, so I finally went back and killed the enemy that respawned. And bearing in mind, it takes me a little while to read all of the dialogue because there's a lot, which is a really good thing. But by the time you've read half of it, an enemy's respawned and you have to kill it again, which can be quite annoying. But anyway, I started to uncover the tale of two young lovers hiding from the Brotherhood of Steel. After a little bit of detective reading work, I was able to uncover the location that the lovers had fled to. A note led me to a terminal, which then led me to a key, which would have led me to the final location of the two lovers had I not been distracted by a wanted player on the horizon. So that is my honest review of Fallout 76, so far from the perspective of a solo player. Don't get me wrong though, the game was a blast to play and I really enjoyed it, especially the PvP. I've already come up with the ultimate recipe for wrecking face. And I mean, I was literally 2v1ing some players with this setup. So if you guys are interested in checking out that build video after I've made it, make sure you subscribe and click the notification button if you want YouTube to notify you as soon as that video is out. But please guys, let me know your thoughts on the game so far and your own experiences and what you would like to see improved. I honestly think that so many of the multiplayer aspects of the game are just done right. They got it bang on. And I was absolutely loving that side of it. But I know a lot of you here watching my channel right now are roleplay game fans. Hence my focus review on the solo experience here. I think if I had to review the game right now, I would give it a 6 out of 10 for a solo player playing this game. And then an 8.5 out of 10 if you're going into this game with friends, enjoying it with other players. But thanks for watching me, ESO. Thanks again for all your support on Patreon, guys. It's super appreciated. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a fantastic day and goodbye.